What's good, y'all? Del Will here. Um, back at it again. Um, I'm recording this on. I don't know. Actually, I don't know when you're gonna see this. Whenever I post it, but yeah, back at it again. And uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and follow me on Instagram at Bell World. And yeah, hope you enjoy the video. This story is called, I tried to show my dad WAP. I got bored one day and decided, hey, why don't I show WAP to my dad? So I told him I wanted to show him something and made him promise that he'd watch it all. So it started in 10 seconds and he said, not this B again. Turn it off now. You want to show your dad this? So he'd already seen it. That's a separate story though. Wow. Oh, she, she, he, whatever, do that. That's up. Uh, my interesting day, a short uh, comedy story. Let me know if you laughed. I wrote this story for a streamer, so it's a mix of nicknames and usernames. Here we go. It was a lovely day out and Gloria had some football tickets. She asked her daughter, Victoria, if she had any plans and if she wanted to hang out with her. Victoria had nothing else to do. So she drove her mom to the football game. Today's game was the Texas Longhorns versus uh, Iowa State Cyclones. Victoria was waiting in line with her mom and saw a tall woman in front of her. It was her friend, uh, Zoo. But Zoo was under five feet just a month ago, and now she was nine feet. Wow, Zoo. Uh, you're so tall. How did you get so tall, asked Victoria. I took an enlargement pill and got quite big and hard. I can bench press over 400 kilograms, says Zoo. When they got inside, Victoria bought lots of nachos and water. Let me take your purse so you can carry our snacks easy, said Gloria said. Victoria noticed her shoes were untied and bent over to tie them. Zoo accidentally bumped into Victoria and knocked off her glasses to the ground. Then Victoria heard a crackling sound and realized her lenses were cracked. Sorry, shorty, didn't see you down there, said Zoo. My glasses. You broke my glasses. I can't say anything without them, Vic screamed Victoria. Oops, sorry, Victoria, replied Zoo. Victoria went to the stands to try to find her mom with her blurry vision. Excuse me, mommy, sorry, mommy, sorry, mommy, sorry, she said. Victoria, I'm over here. What happened to your glasses, said Victoria. I mean, said Gloria. Gloria looked inside her purse to get her spare glasses. Zoo then proceeded to take her seat right in front of Victoria. How am I supposed to see the game? Victoria thought. She didn't want to miss the game, so she simply tried to look for another seat. A security guard named King of Heart spotted Victoria trying to change seats. Hold it right there. You must stay in your assigned seat. I stated on your ticket. Now get back to your seat this second, he said. Rude, she replied. Everyone was cheering and Victoria could only assume that her team was winning. She got an idea on how to change seats by crowd surfing to a different row. The crowd picked Victoria up and she was riding the crowd's waves to find a better seat. She then spotted King of Heart on a surfboard and blew his whistle. He blew his whistle and directed the crowd to move her back to her assigned seat. The audience got distracted at a field goal and Victoria wiped out King of Heart through a life boy 
to Victoria and swam back to her a side seat. The game ended and her team won 21 to 7. Victoria got in it, her car and her mom with her mom and drove back home. With with it being so nice, Victoria decides to take a little walk to the park. After walking for a while, she spots a strange man named Car Chaos looking at the stop sign. Sir, sir, are you okay? You, you've been staring at this sign for minutes now, said Victoria. I'm fine, just waiting for this sign to change to go sign, said Chaos. Victoria reaches the park and spots her friends Zoo and Tossif playing chess. Zoo was losing badly and Tossif went in for the kill. No, please, I beg you, screamed Zoo. Ha, I murder you, shouted Tossif. A nearby, nearby uh, cop named Blue the Unseen wanted to find out what was going on. Zoo, in a fit of anger, started to bang and squeeze a bottle of hot sauce. It went everywhere, and a small drop went inside Victoria's mouth. Zoo walked away, and Victoria drank some water and started to choke. Hold it right there. Keep your hands up where I can see them," said Blue. "Officer, it's not what you think," cried Tossa. "Cough, wait, cough," said Victoria. "There's blood everywhere, and you poisoned this lovely lady. Get on the ground!" shouted Blue. While this was going on, there was a little exchange right behind Blue between Dennis and Michael. This exchange was easily spotted. I tossed it, but unseen to blue. Got the stuff? Asked Michael. You know it. I snuck it this across the border, replied Dennis. Dennis pulled out a small jar of dirt, and Michael took out a sniff. Are you are you trying to calm me? This stuff is local, shouted Michael. They pulled out their guns and took aim. Michael knocked over a bench to hide behind Dennis. Hid behind a trash can. They shot back and forth, constantly missing. The gunshots were very loud. Officer, look behind you. There's two people in a gunfight, shouted Tosso. The officer was too focused on Tosso and ignored everything that was happening behind him. Victoria was so scared of choking that she could not help. They just managed to sneak behind the bench and took aim at Michael, but missed. The bullet grazed Blue's ear, causing him to slightly bleed. Blue ignored the gun, fight still. <laughs> Try to stay calm, his backup will be there soon, said Blue. Victoria could finally speak and shouted, Hot sauce, it's hot sauce. Zoo came back onto the scene and explained to Blue that there was no murder. He just got mad and took his frustrating out on the bottle of hot sauce. Michael got the upper hand finally as Dennis was out of bullets. Dennis came back and go until he bumped into Blue's back. Any last words, Dennis? Asked Michael. Okay, you win. Please don't shoot me, shouted Dennis. Dennis put out a second jar of dirt. Michael confirmed that this dirt was from across the borders. Michael paid Dennis for the jar of dirt. Uh, same time next week, asked Michael. Sure thing, buddy, said Dennis. Well, it seems everything's fine here. Oh, hey, Dennis. Did you notice? Did not notice you there? Are you keeping me out of trouble, said Blue? Sure thing, officer, said Dennis. Victoria could not understand how Blue was so blinded, but decided to say nothing more about the situation. Snitches get stitches after all. Zoo and Victoria decided to leave the park and head to Trader Joe's to pick up a few things. When they got inside, both they both rushed to the toilet paper aisle. There was only one row left. Mine, 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 they both shouted. 
Victoria got her hands on the last row and went under Zhao's legs. She quickly bought the row so Zhao could not aim it, claim it. Zhao accepted defeat and they both finished doing the rest of their shopping. Zhao and Victoria said their goodbyes and parted ways. On the way home, Victoria spotted chaos, still staring at the stop sign. Any minute now, any minute now, said chaos. Victoria couldn't take this stupidity any longer and told him it's never going to change. How about you leave me alone? Can't you see I'm thinking? If I win, I'm going to make a lot of money, screamed chaos and anger. Victoria backed away and let the man be. When she went, when she got back home, she took a shower and then headed off to bed. Later that night, chaos saw the stop sign change to a gold sign and he sprinted as fast as he could. He heard a voice inside his head. Congratulations, you win, the voice said. Chaos looked up at the sky and stared to pour and what it started and it started to pour and pour lots of money then wow This is called, what was I thinking? So I've been working early shifts at my work and I need to be up and out the house by 6 30. Lately I've been just only, only getting 2-4 to four hours of sleep. I am not mo a morning person whatsoever. As I get ready for work half asleep, I was pulling up my jeans and I soon realized I still had my PJ shorts on. I could done the normal thing thing and just simply take my jeans back off and then take off my shorts too but no i has to be thinking different and cut off my shorts what was i thinking lml good thing they were oh and the funniest part is to me is that i didn't remember i did that and when I walked through the door and saw my cut up shorts, I was cracking up laughing with my memories of doing that this morning. So five downies versus as I never learned. Okay, story of my first gaming PC. So six years ago, I was building my first PC with a rare case or a box or whatever you want to call it. And I needed a Wi-Fi chip and I didn't know how to put it in. So I asked the store clerk how I put it in and he grabbed the exact case as mine. And he said it might be different than this. So it might be somewhere else and i told him no that's the same one and then he explained it to me very nicely and i went back and set it up and it worked perfectly yeah <clears throat> that was a strange title <clears throat> i was about five six ish Oof. when this happened but constant Context this will be important. I used to rinse out my hairspray bottles and fill them up with water and play with them Okay, I was at my grandma's sitting in flower with a hairspray bottle and my cousin came over and her boyfriend uh, They chit chatted for a while telling stories catching up all that jazz my Grandmother has something to show my cousin in her bedroom. So the two of them left, leaving me alone with S. Uh, he just kind of looked around the room, clearly uncomfortable being left alone with me. So we just sat in silence for about a minute till I looked up 
till I looked him dead in the eye. I unscrewed the cap of the hairspray bottle and started to chug it down. A wave of shock makes pure horror washed over his face. I don't think you should be drinking that innocent little meat. Why? And I, and I, at that moment, my grandmother and cousin came back. Didn't say anything about what just had happened. My guess is that it was because he didn't want to get in trouble for not stopping me. Or he was still in shock. And then they left. Six years later, they broke up. And I waited a couple more years before I told her what she had gotten over him. Why we no longer have jaywalking on our door. Or, I mean, my bad, JW on our door. I was telling this, this story to a friend and they said I should share. So, when I was a kid, we lived in an area with a lot of families who were Jehovah Witnesses. My family was not. So we would get a lot of people knocking on our door. Every now and then again, we were never rude or anything. Usually saying things like, oh, oh, I'm sorry, that's not a good time. But obviously that meant eventually someone else would come to knock on our door again. One day during the week, my dad, sister, and I were at home. My sister and I were sitting in the dining room walk walking up the driveway. We called for our dad working from home at the time. Please open the door, dad. This dad walks out of his office size and says right i need this to stop at the time we paid no attention to it but at this point we he walked up to the bookshelf in the living room before opening the door and the two men that stands in the doorway we can hear their conversation it's all perf perfectly polite no harsh words no get off my f porch uh, nothing perfectly pleasant until after a few minutes the two guys just stop talking and walking away Dad tells them to have a nice day and close the door. He laughs and says I don't think they'll be back Obviously, we were confused. What happened? What did you say to them? I Didn't say anything, but I don't think they like my book when Dad had walked up to the bookshelf. He had grabbed a book to hold yeah, grabbed a book to hold while talking to the men. Book's title, The Brief History of Atheism. We never got witnesses knocking on our door after that. Wow.
Try that, creating a flip mackerel burger. 